Good morning, everyone. You're welcome to the Vetiva Breakfast Meeting, brought to you by Vetiva Capital Management in partnership with Frontier Africa Reports. Um, once again, we'd like to apologize as we're unable to hold the session yesterday due to some technical challenges we were experiencing. And we're glad that you have joined us in today's session. Um, we'll be getting the usual rundown of the equities and fixed income markets from our traders. We'll also have joining us today our partners from CGF Boss, and they'll be giving us updates on the BRVM. Then we'll conclude with headlines from across Africa by our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports. We would like to remind everyone that the meeting is being recorded and it may be shared with third parties. We're also streaming live on our Vetiva online Facebook page if you prefer to view or join from that platform. The session is set to last for 30 minutes inclusive of Q&A. However, we'll be having um, a 30 minute session where we'll we will let people can like, you can ask questions. Um, if during the course of the session, you can use the chat function available on Zoom to send in your questions or the comment section on Facebook. Um, we'll now be starting off with Symbiads from our global equities desk and should be taking us through some equities markets. Good morning, Symbiad. Good morning, Victoria, and good morning to everyone. Uh, like she mentioned, I'll be doing the review of performance of some of the equities markets in West Africa, and I'll be starting in Ghana. Uh, the Ghana equities market continues its bullish trend as the index closed Monday session 14 basis points up, uh, lifting the index uh, like we've been seeing in recent sessions um, was Unilever uh, with a price appreciation of 9.83%. Uh, the stock has been the best performing stock uh, in terms of capital gains uh, with about 60% return in the last one week. Um, also joining Unilever was Cowbank with a decent 2.86% gain uh, yesterday. Um, however, activity levels declined uh, in comparison to what we had on Friday, uh, a 48% decline in turnover. Um, for today, we expect the market to trade in similar pattern with improvement in activity levels um, as investors continue to favor names like ETI, MTN Ghana, uh, and Cowbank. Um, over in Nigeria, the first week day of trading closed down by 12 basis points, uh, largely on the back of losses recorded across board. Uh, the market witnessed some profit taking activities in some mid and large cap names. Uh, from the likes of WAPCO shedding about 5% to UBN, GTCO, and uh, Flower Mills, all losing marginal points. Uh, speaking to sectoral performance, uh, it started off weak uh, with only the um, insurance sector posting uh, a decent 37 basis points gain. Um, uh, also, activity levels declined significantly yesterday. Volume traded was down by about 24% while turnover dipped by 36%. Um, however, the session recorded more gainers than losers. Uh, going into today, we expect to see continued demand in some penny stocks uh, with the probability of market closing the session mixed. Uh, on a final note, um, Access Bank has released a statement that they won't be able to meet up with the regulatory due date for a submission of audited interim results. Uh, which is 29th of August, uh, due to ongoing strategic business combinations across jurisdiction and the need to obtain regulatory approvals, uh, stating that they expect to publish on or before September 10th. Uh, so we'll be watching the banking space to see how the market will react to the after results as they start to get released. Uh, thank you, and that'll be all from my end. Um, thank you, Symbiot. Next up is Sheikh from CJF Boss, and he'll be giving us updates on the BRVM. Good morning, Sheikh. Hello, good morning, Victoria. Um, the BRVM um, market is basically um, still continuing its bullish trend since the beginning of the year and has passed over the last week the 175 point bar and is steadily progressing towards 180. It is important to note that the BRVM composite has not reached the 175 uh, levels for more than two years. 
the it the the index has appreciated by 3.13 percent reaching today the final value of 175.85 points thanks to the enthusiasm of investors that are still relevant um the market was somewhat agitated by the publication of the result of the first uh, first half of 2021 for the companies on hotel burkina faso and bank of africa burkina faso whose uh, securities respectively jumped 5.12% and 13.41%. Uh, there is still a strong presence of the buyers who have literally dominated the exchange over the past few weeks. Um, last week, uh, 28 stocks ended up in the green versus 11 in the red. In terms of sectoral um, presence, uh, the, it was mainly dominated by the BRVM industry, which rose by 34.36%. And the total value traded over the last week by investors was 2.1 billion CFA. In terms of individual uh, uh, stocks, it was mainly dominated by Nouvelle Edition Ivarian, uh, which rose by 39.73%. and. Uh, Solibra Ivory Coast by 33.49%. Um, for Nouvelle Edition Ivoyen, the share recorded uh, since the big, since 4th of January a 137% markup. And uh, in August, uh, published, uh, in August 20, uh, published its uh, 2020 annual results with a historical profit of 801 million CFA, which jumped by 36.90% compared to last year. Um, as a reminder, the company specialized in the distribution of primary and secondary education textbooks and uh, didn't uh, publish its results uh, for the first half of 2021. In terms of uh, biggest drop, Alios Finance uh, Ivory Coast is still on a downward trend during the last three consecutive weeks. The share recorded a 21.54% um, between August 6 and August 20. The company suffered a loss of 444 million in the first quarter of 2021, following a 37% drop in turnover. Um, in terms of uh, stock market highlights, um, SMB Ivory Coast announced an important change in management with the appointment of Mr. Sidibe as its CEO. Um, track traffic um, paid plans to pay on September 2nd its 2020 dividend uh, for a total gross amount of 185 billion CFA, corresponding to 102 uh, CFA per share net dividend. Um, that's about it for the equity market. In terms of the bond market, uh, this week closed at uh, 6.9 trillion, uh, which is a drop of 0.22% uh, uh, compared to last week. The weekly value traded stood at 8.57 billion uh, against 1.37 billion uh, last week, marked mainly by the transaction in the Ivory Coast Treasury bond for a total amount of 7.35 billion. Um, in terms of the money market, um, the states of Niger, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, and Senegal issued treasury bills um, versus the Togo uh, state that issued uh, treasury bond. The total amount requested in the market was 225 billion, but the market uh, came back with a strong offer of 492 billion, which represents an overall coverage rate of 218 percent. So only 236 billion was retained in the market. Um, in terms of the this come upcoming this this current week, we are expecting uh, the Ivory Coast and the Mali Treasury bonds uh, totaling 90 billion CFA. That's it in terms of updates for the BRVM. Um, thank you very much, Sheikh, for the updates. Next up is Omorige, and he'll be taking us through fixed income and currencies. Good morning, Omorige. 
Good morning. Good morning, everybody. System liquidity declined significantly yesterday to open at around um, 211.1 billion negative, coming from the 72.3 billion negative that was recorded on Friday. Despite the significant decline in system liquidity yesterday, interbank rate moderated by over 608 basis points on the back of um, the reduced fund pressure in the market as OBB and overnight rate closed at 17.5%. Our expectation for today is that interbank market interbank rate will most likely trade at lower levels on the back of um, OMO repayment of about 157.27 billion that is coming into the system today. The parallel market remains stable yesterday to trade at 520 Naira to a dollar, while the annual window opened at 411.68 Naira to a dollar. The highest rate that was recorded yesterday was 413. While the closing rate was 111.83 Naira to a dollar, Brent and WTI gained about, both gained about 0.9% today to open at um, 69.41 and 66.24 dollars per barrel, respectively. The TV's market opened this week on a muted note with interest skewed towards the tail end of the benchmark of, especially on the 28th July 2022 and the 11th August 2022 maturities. Please be majorly consummated on the CBN special NTB that is the 30th of August 2021 and the 11th August 2022 maturities, with average benchmark rate remaining unchanged at 4.56%. The OMO market traded on the flat note with interest majorly seen on the mid end of papers, particularly on the 18th January 2022 and the 8th February 2022 maturities. Quite a few trades were consummated on the 15th February 2022 maturity. Overall, be average benchmark rate remained unchanged at 5.82%. The bonds market opened this week on a relatively muted note with bullish sentiment seen across the mid to long end of the benchmark of as market players try to reinvest the coupon inflows of about 49.48 billion that came into the system yesterday. Most of the maturities that we actively traded yesterday were the 2028, 2036, and the 2050, with few trades consummated on those maturities, while average benchmark rate declined by about four basis points to close at 11.85%. In the euro bond market, it was a tier of two halves, as buy side interest we are seen on the mid dated maturities, while sell side interest we are seen on the long dated maturities. Offers on the 2049 maturity improved slightly to close at 8.1% um, levels yesterday. The corporate space traded on a muted note with few trades consummated on the first bank 2025 euro bond. For expectations today, we believe that the current bullish sentiment in the bonds market will persist as players continue to train sentiment um, around the upcoming Eurobond issuance next month. For the TB's market, we expect it to trade actively today as players try to reinvest their coupon. They are more repayments of about 157.27 billion that are coming to the system today. That will be all for fixed income. Thank you. Thank you very much, Omorige. We'll now conclude with Justina from Frontier Africa Reports and she'll be giving us some headlines from across Africa. Good morning, Justina. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we start here from, um, from the East African region, where in Kenya, the central bank has begun receiving bids for a 21-year amortized infrastructure bond worth 75 billion shillings, and that's until September 7th. The bond will be auctioned the next day, that's on September 8th. It will have an early redemption of 50% of principal on the 1st of September 2031. And the reason for the bond, according to Treasury, is to take advantage of a liquid money market to close the domestic borrowing target. And also, Cooperative Bank, has, Cooperative Bank of Kenya has extended its joint venture with the government of South Sudan by another three years. And that's because of some issues that has occurred in the South, in the South Sudan region. Um, Cooperative Bank made its entrance into South Sudan in 2013 and formed the Cooperative Bank of South Sudan with a controlling stake of 51%, um, with 49% remaining um, owned by the government. But because of the issues currently in South Sudan, they had to extend for another three years. Um, Standard Chartered Bank of Kenya 
has reported a 50.9% surge in its net profit to 4.9 billion shillings helped by lower operating expenses and higher non-interest income. It, however, did not declare an inter interim dividend due to challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, in the Central African region, we have the OPEC Secretary General, um, Mohamed Bakindo, who has kicked off a three-day working visit to the Republic of Congo. Um, the visit is primarily aimed at boosting regional and global energy cooperation with the Central African country. Um, we, we should remember that um, just recently, not too long ago, um, Congo was um, was um, absorbed into the uh, into the OPEC um, OPEC as one of the OPEC members not too long ago. Now we move on to to the Southern African region, to the Southern African region, where we, the Financial Sector Conduct Authority has suspended the exchange license of ZAX, and the five-year-old company has been a strong competitor for, um, for the JSC. And this suspension is over non-compliance with liquidity and capital adequacy requirements. Um, it faces cancellation of its license in three months if it doesn't meet up with these requirements. Um, on Monday, ShopRite added to its bucket list of countries it plans to exit by saying it plans to leave Uganda and the, market, and the Madagascar markets. Um, it marked these two countries in its report as discontinued operations. Um, let's recall that in March, um, it sold its stake in the Nigerian and um, it, it, it sold its 15 year old company in Niger, um, stores in Nigeria and left also um, left all its stores in Kenya. Um, it's saying that it will focus more on the South, the South African markets for now. Um, in Zimbabwe, the country's largest mobile money platform, EcoCash, plans to review, or let's say it plans to adjust its tariffs by 10%, and this will take effect in September the 19th this year. And that's all from, South, so from the Southern African region. Now we move on to the Northern African region, where Libya, the Libya Central Bank governor, Sadiq Al-Kabir, says the country will have to raise its oil production by 40% to 1.8 million barrels per day in 2022. Um, let's re also recall that um, this country, this country, Libya, has um, been exempted by the, um, by the OPEC, by OPEC Plus recently, just recently. And now the governor, the Libya's central bank governor is saying, this is in order to start restoring the, the economy which has been crippled by a 10 year civil war. According to him, such production level, if stable, could regenerate $35 billion in oil revenues for the country if oil, if oil averages at about $60 per barrel. And in Egypt, where the European Bank for Construction and Development, that's EBM, EBCD, ERBD, sorry, uh, sorry, that's the EBCD, yeah, sorry, has approved a loan of 250 million euros for the rehabilitation and upgrade of the Cairo Metro Line 2. The loan will also be used to finance the upgrade of an ex existing rolling stock fleet and buying new rolling stock for the project. Um, and in Tunisia, the country has recorded a monthly trade deficit of 1.409 billion dinars as against the 1.45 billion in June. Um, the 1.409 billion it was in July this year. Imports fell by 10.6% while exports also declined by 13.2%. And that'll be all from us here in Frontier Africa Reports. Thank you for listening. And thank you, Justina, for that update. We have now come to the Q&A segment. If you have any questions for our speakers, you can make use of the chat function available on Zoom, or if you're joining us from Facebook, you can make use of the comment section. And also, if you prefer to speak, you can use the raise hand function and you'll be called upon to speak.
Okay, it looks like we do not have any questions for today, which means we have now come to the end of today's session. On behalf of Vetiva Capital Management and our media partners at Frontier Africa Reports, we thank you for joining us today and we hope that you have a productive day ahead. Thank you and good morning. <laughs>